ASAP Yams was the mastermind behind the success of ASAP Mob, figuring out a way for Rocky to see mainstream success, like getting his song Effing Problems to 700 million streams. Yam would spend years, day and night, studying the hip hop industry to create a marketing plan that would lead Rocky to becoming one of the biggest artists in the world. But it wasn't just for him. Ferg would even grow to one of the biggest hip hop artists under Yams, and so would many of the artists under ASAP Mob. Yams had such a profound impact impact on the hip hop industry, his impact is still felt today in artists like Lil Uzi and Playboy Cardi. So how did he do this? Yams was born in 1998, growing up in Harlem, New York. He was a fan of hip hop growing up, he loved backpack rap, he was inspired by artists like DMX, Cameron and Big Pun. He was interested in a different way than others though. He was interested in every part of hip hop, how artists come up with ideas, market themselves, and just the process as a whole when it comes to making music, not just how the music sounds itself. So this interest would bring him into the world of managing artists. His freshman year of high school, Yams would begin managing producers in his school and area. He'd get the experience doing this and his love for it would grow. Eventually, it'll lead him into 10th grade, where he'd get his biggest opportunity. One day, he went to a store that sold custom clothes and started talking to Karen Civil, who was working with Dipset Records. He would go and ask if there was any chance he could do some work for them. This is where he got the opportunity to be an unpaid intern at Dipset. It seemed like he was just doing pretty basic and mundane tasks for them like getting coffee, organizing things and that. But the important thing was he was learning the music industry. He was getting knowledge on how things would work and the ins and outs of it all. What to do and what not to do. Apparently Yams would sit on the computer for hours and just study the rap game and its history. He was firstly interested but he wanted to learn as much as he could from this opportunity. So when it was done, he could kind of make his own move. He found out there was a lot more paperwork involved in everything with music. You have to be smart. You just can't be straight about it or you'll lose. That will eventually end for Yams, but again, he'd leave with a wealth of knowledge about music that he'd go apply for himself. It was 2006 and he would go join forces with two of his close friends, Bari and Ills. They wanted to create a collective of visionaries and push the culture. They would call themselves ASAP Mob. Bari was known for his fashion. He was frequently getting bashed for wearing skinny jeans, so he was focused on the fashion within the group. Since Yams was passionate and had a ton of knowledge, he'd be the brains of the group. Ills would become the model of the group wearing whatever they came up with. The group would expand over the next few years, adding members from all creative disciplines. It include artists like Ferg, who we all know for his music, and was another artist who was heavily into fashion. P on the boards of the producer, Relly was a model, Toby we all know, he's a rapper. Ty was a producer, Lou became Rocky's assistant because they met him at a show and he was just genuinely helpful, but one member was about to join the group that would change everything. ASAP Rocky was born in 1988, also in Harlem. He was involved with the streets, but after seeing Loss pretty closely to him, he kind of realized that he needed to find something more. This would lead him to start rapping. He didn't really have any real music at the time. He was just freestyling. It wasn't great. It was extremely unpolished, but it would cause something. Bari would take notice of Rocky rapping and show Yams. Yams would see something in Rocky. He saw potential for him as an artist. This is where he'd approach Rocky to join ASAP. He would agree. Yams saw potential for him to become one of the biggest artists in the world. Rocky's music was unpolished. Again, it was just a bunch of freestyles, so they would need to work on his music. Yams and Rocky would spend years perfecting his sound, making music as polished as possible before they would release anything. They'd spend late nights talking out a plan for Rocky to take over the music industry, but first, his music needed to be at a standard that was almost perfect. But we'll get back to Rocky. On the side, Yams realized if he wanted to grow the artist around him, it needed to be tapped in with the internet. As from 2006 to 2012, the internet really began taking over. Yams would run a blog at the time where blogs were most popular, but he he would soon switch. He would see the girl he was fucking with at the time start using Tumblr, and he first thought he was kind of gay, but he said fuck it and began using it one day. He would go under the name Westside Stevie. This is where he would post pretty much all things music, posting songs, recommending songs, all that kind of shit. But since he had such an advanced knowledge of hip hop and the history of it, and not only that, but he was very aware of the technical behind the scenes workings of music due to him being a manager and his internship, he would end up getting a massive following on Tumblr. And over the years, he would keep posting and growing and growing. Till finally, he would take full advantage of his Tumblr to take over the music industry. By 
early 2011, the collective thought that Rocky's music had developed to a point in where they thought he could officially begin to release music. So Yams and Rocky would put in place the plan they had been working on all along. It was essentially that Yams was going to leverage his platform on Tumblr and promote Rocky's singles to a large group of people, people that were following him. And since they'd spent years working on Rocky's music quality, obviously people were going to like it. And this would bring attention for Rocky to release an album. And as Yams knows albums is where fans are created, this would be a lot better than just posting Rocky's music on another platform because Yams had spent so long building trust with his fan base. Rocky would finally release his first single, Purple Swag. Yams would instantly begin to promote the song on Tumblr. It followed the cloud rap sound and showed off Rocky's ability to rap. I mean, we've probably all heard the song, it's been crazy. They would come out with the music video again, promoted by Yams, and today has 60 million views on YouTube. And this would begin it all for ASAP. They would instantly follow up the momentum Rocky had with another single called Peso, another great song in a similar style with eerie production. Yams again would begin promoting the song on his Tumblr page. It was a lot easier now since Rocky's first single gained a lot of trust, so this song would do even better, with it having 75 million views on YouTube. This success allowed for Rocky to be able to sign a record deal only a month after releasing Peso. He was able to secure a distribution deal with ASAP. This was exactly what they needed to be able to transition into the next phase of Rocky's success, Live Love ASAP. They now wanted to transition all the attention surrounding Rocky's singles to put it towards his coming album, Live Love ASAP, that released in October 2011. It's known for its innovative production, blending elements of Southern hip hop with Houston's chop and screwed style. Rocky's flow combined with his atmospheric and hazy beats contributed to the tape's distinct sound. The mixtape's production featured contributions from Clams Casino, Space Ghost Perp, and others, providing a unique sonic backdrop. While Rocky is the primary artist on the mixtape, there are features from other members in the ASAP mob, such as Ferg and Twelvey. These collaborations helped establish a sense of camaraderie with the ASAP mob. Yams was even able to use his Tumblr page to get features from Schoolboy Q, and he'd even get Drake to post purple swag on his blog. Rocky received widespread critical acclaim for his innovative production, charismatic delivery, and overall cohesiveness of the project. Rocky's name was now out there as an artist, thanks to the meticulous planning of Yams. Yams built a system to help everyone out in ASAP. He would use the platform he built and rinse and repeat, giving everyone promotion at ASAP. And since people trusted him, everyone in ASAP started getting a boost. People didn't even know that Yams was a part of ASAP, so it made the promotion on Tumblr even more effective. From an outside perspective, everything was great. Rocky was breaking out as an artist. ASAP was beginning to get eyes on them from all around the world. The only way was up, but something wasn't right. Yams was fighting his own personal battle. He was using copious amount of drugs to cope. This led him almost choking to death on his own vomit one night on Xanax. He'd even sometimes choke on his own tongue. Yams was stressed. He was the leader of the group and he felt the pressure of trying to control everyone's success. He was in a constant battle to make sure everyone in the group was reaching their full potential. But alongside this, he felt as if he was getting pushed out the group. So the only way he knew how to deal with it was to get high. He'd take a ridiculous amount of drugs. Tolerance was high, shit apparently. It got so bad that Rocky began to notice his problem. But despite this, he'd keep all the weight on his shoulders and kept pushing forward and more success would end up following. Over the next few years, Ferg would start being the focus, and he was starting to get some serious attention. Ferg, who also grew up in Harlem, he was known for his aggressive trap style. He was also known for his ability to hustle, and would get the nickname Trap Lord because of it. Down the line, he'd continue rapping and get noticed by ASAP. Yam saw a vision for him, and knew he could get to the top. He just had to execute the right plan. So what did he do? ASAP would come out with their first mixtape in 2012, Lords Never Worry. This mixtape features a mix of different styles, with artists showing their individual talents over a variety of beats. Lords Never Worried helped solidify the ASAP mob's presence in the hip-hop scene and paved the way for the individual members to pursue their own solo career. Yams would achieve this by trying to give every member of ASAP their own spotlight in the project, but one artist was going to benefit the most from that, Ferg. Ferg's song Work would feature on the project, an extremely catchy song that put Ferg in his best light, rapping with aggression over great production. This song would go viral quick, and today on Spotify alone has 23 million streams. Finally, igniting the career for ASAP Ferg. Yams, as the leader of the group, felt the responsibility to give Ferg the best chance of success. So in 2012, they would begin to work on his debut project, but they somehow needed to come up with a way to leverage the success of his previous song work. So they would do something pretty smart. They would remix a song, but this time use the connections they'd built 
and have it featuring artists Rocky, French Montana, Schoolboy Q, and Trinidad Jane. This song would headline the upcoming project, Trap Lord. The song would reach 300 million plays on Spotify, being one of his biggest songs ever. And the success of the single would pour out into the rest of the project. The production on Trap Lord features dark and ominous beats, often filled with heavy bass lines, distorted synths, and sharp hi-hat. The album incorporates a variety of atmospheric and moody sounds, creating a menacing and intense sonic landscape. ASAP Ferg uses ad-libs and unique vocal inflections, which adds to the overall dynamic and engaging nature of the project. The lyrics of Trap Lord often touch upon themes of street life, struggle, and triumph, reflecting on Ferg's experiences and background. The album captures the essence of trap music, with its hard-hitting beats, unapologetic lyrics, making it a standout release in hip-hop at the time. Yams was also smart about the angle he wanted Ferg to take. He wanted to leverage Rocky's success, since they were obviously part of the same group. So he would feature on the song Shabba, which gave the project another hit to boost the overall numbers. With the song almost at 200 million plays on Spotify, this would solidify Ferg as a major artist in the hip hop industry and would become the second global artist in ASAP, thanks to the genius and meticulous planning of ASAP Yams and the rest of the mob. In 2013 was also the year Yams would plan and work with Rocky on his next project, Long Live ASAP. The making of Long Live ASAP involved collaborations with several producers and artists to craft a diverse and innovative sound. Rocky enlisted the talents of renowned producers such as Clams Casino, Hit Boy, and Danger Mouse, among others. These producers brought their unique styles to the project. Rocky features a distinctive sound that blends atmospheric production with influences from Southern hip hop, cloud rap, and Houston screw music. The album showcases versatile flows and a dark, moody aesthetic. They crafted an album that is a cohesive and innovative project marked by catchy hooks, memorable lines, and a dynamic sonic landscape that appeals to a broad audience. In terms of features, Yams and Rocky knew that they could leverage the insane amount of attention Rocky had from his previous project. They wanted to take the approach of using other high profile artists to boost the popularity of the project, and they did just that. Rocky collaborated with artists from different regions and genres, showcasing the album's versatility. Notable features include Kendrick Lamar on One Train, and Fucking problems, Drake on fucking problems as well, Santa Gold on hell, and even fucking Skrillex on Wild for the Night. Overall, this drove the success of the project, with all these songs having hundreds of millions of streams. The diverse range of features also adds a layer to the album, providing different perspectives and contributing to the overall appeal. Yams and Rocky's ability to bring together artists with distinct styles and create a cohesive project is a testament to his artistic vision and collaborative spirit. Yams was on top of the world. From an outside perspective, ASAP had just seen Rocky turn into one of the biggest artists in the music industry and Ferg was right there behind him. They just had dropped their most successful tape that began to give everyone shine in ASAP. Everything was going right, but there was something behind the scenes that wasn't. Yams kept getting worse and worse, but it came to the point when it came to his drug problem. He wasn't able to control it. It was becoming too much. Yams, though, at the same time was planning for ASAP to release their next project. This would drop in 2014 called Lord, but by the summer of 2014, his drug problem became too much and he would check into rehab. He'd talk about his drug problem on Tumblr when he finally got out of rehab. He said that his drug problem got so bad, he was suffering from seizures and other sicknesses that usually lead to death caused by drug addiction. His tolerance got so high, he was taking eight Xanax bars just to let his high kick in. His idea of enjoying life had people thinking he was trying to take his own life. His experience in rehab it led him to realize the fault in the generation. How everyone was classless, focused on materialistic items, drugs, and just genuinely moving without a sense of spirituality. Because of this, in June 2014, he would become completely sober. He wasn't even smoking Newports. He'd do whatever he could to avoid temptations, such as not going to festivals, video shoots, club appearances, etc. He also had to scrap his plans for the project Lord he was trying to come up with and decided to focus his attention on individual artists within ASAP Mob. It began time to work on Rocky's next project. They wanted to take all the success he previously received and damn near multiply it. Yams and Rocky would get to work in promoting Rocky's new single. This was going to be Multiply. It was slightly different from what we had previously heard from Rocky. He stepped away slightly from cloud rap and focused more on his ability to flow. All in all, the song would reach 80 million views on YouTube thanks to promotion and quality of the song. This would perfectly set up an opportunity for them to release the next single, Lord Pretty Flocko Joy 2, which would amass 300 million streams 
on Spotify, being the driving force, providing the hype for Rocky's next project, Long Last ASAP. It was almost completely set. It had just turned 2015. Yams and Rocky had been working to complete the project and suddenly tragedy would strike. In January 2015, Rocky was hanging out in an apartment in Brooklyn. Yams was caught face down in his vomit in his own bed. He was unresponsive. He was rushed to hospital, but by then, it was too late. ASAP Yams had passed away. It was said to be an overdose from mixing Zans and opiates. Rest in peace, Yams. Had such a profound impact on hip hop. Eventually, it became time for Rocky to release his album around May 2015. With Yams being honored on the cover with his birthmark clearly being shown, Yams was, as we said, the executive producer on the project. The album features a diverse range of musical styles and influences. The album's sound can be characterized as a fusion of hip hop and elements of psychedelic and alternative music. The production on the album is rich and varied, incorporating elements of cloud rap, boom bap, with psychedelic and trippy undertones. The beats are often laid with samples, creating an immersive experience. The production features a lot of hard-hitting bass, atmospheric synths, and unconventional instrumentation. Rocky's flow on the album is the most versatile it's ever been, ranging from smooth and melodic to more aggressive and rapid fire. Lyrically, the album explores a variety of themes, including success, fame, relationships, and personal struggles. Overall, at long last ASAP showcases a departure from the traditional hip hop sound and embraces more of a genre blurring approach, which contributes to its unique identity. The album would be heavily carried by the hits with songs like LSD, Every Day and Canal Street, all having hundreds of millions of streams and were the epitome of the project's sound and carefully crafted to go viral. As you can see, Yams was very careful on how he wanted the artists in ASAP to release music. He ensured that quality would be the main aspect and could not give less of a fuck about how long it took for them to come up with the quality of project. I mean, it took years for Rocky to release a song, and when he finally did, it was so high quality, it was almost inevitable it would take off. He was someone who was meticulous about everything when it came to music, from the promotional strategy to the sound of the project. This was evident from how far he was able to take ASAP Mob, helping guide them to the top of the music industry. But Yams was someone who studied the hip-hop scene. He would collect, like, if you went to his crib, right. He had Vibe, Source, Double XL, like magazines. Wow, makes and, sense. Yeah, like Soul Train, Ozone. Like he just had magazines stacked. And he, he really wanted to be a, a ghetto journalist. He was a visionary. He saw talent before anyone else. This led him to having a profound influence on other artists in the music industry. Back around 2015, Yams had reached out to several artists, giving them advice and telling them their time would eventually come. He would talk to Lil Uzi frequently. They never met, but he'd allow Uzi to see how he would move. Uzi would call him a genius, the way he set out every move with cohesion. Yams would say his time was coming, and soon enough, it did. Uzi would take knowledge from Yams and break out with money longer, and I mean, we know his career was only up in that point. Yams would end up co-signing Vince Staples before the world had any clue who he was. And Vince, as we would know over the next few years, became one of the most respected artists in all of hip hop. Yams also had a deep eye in the underground. In 2014, he would discover Lucky, who was focused on cloud rap at the time. He would end up showing it to Rocky and they would eventually meet. It had also been said that around 2014, Yams was aware of Playboy Cardi. Cardi, after the passing of Yams, became very closely affiliated with the ASAP mob. It feature on their coming tapes and Rocky would feature on Cardi's project. Cardi would gain knowledge left by Yams from the ASAP mob. This would attribute to the success Cardi would have down the line where he would market himself very carefully for his project Whole Lotta Red where he would end up building a cult fan base, sticking to very carefully planned releases and sonically sticking to a unique and consistent theme. Very similar to how Yams planned for Rocky's success. After the passing of Yams, the collective would end up losing a sense of direction. Rocky would end up getting extremely expensive experimental with his project testing, which didn't really work out. It kind of lacked consistency and substance and would grow to be his worst performing project, releasing in 2018. Since then for Rocky, we still haven't seen much activity from him. Ferg would still see great levels of success with his project still striving, featuring Plain Jane, which would be his biggest song to date. But again, his releases have grown increasingly infrequent, but still he can make a hit on command. Don't get that f***ing twisted. The Mob would release two projects over the next two years collectively. In 2015, they would release Cozy Tapes Volume 1, the project being an ode to Yams, with the lead single, Yambagini High, also paying respect to Yams. This was a successful and cohesive project that was followed up two years later with Cozy Tapes Volume 2. This again, loaded with features similar to the first tape and led by the song Raf, featuring Cardi, Frank Ocean, Rocky, Uzi, and Quavo, which is ridiculous, and these level of high-profile artists would carry the project. After this project, though, ASAP would begin its serious decline without Yams leading with direction. As we said, Rocky and Verg's release 
releases grew infrequent. Along with this, other artists would begin to decline and would end up leaving the group in 2019 to focus on his solo career. This for one tells me that he didn't really see any value in being an ASAP. You grinding so hard and nobody hitting you up and saying, yo, bro, keep doing your thing. You feel like, you know what I mean? But I am ASAP mob. I'm carrying an ASAP mob title. Right. Like, I, I feel like I'm the best. I ain't no cocky shit. But I think all my brothers probably fight they better than, you know what I mean, when we in the booth, so yeah. I fucking outrap them. Which kind of shows their inability to grow artists without yams. The group also began feuding with each other. It also began going public, beefing with Ferg, which calling his music trash, leaking DMs and whatnot, just basically starting shit. ASAP Bari would work with Velo, who would catch a sexual assault charge and end up defending Ills in the group. This created a clear divide within ASAP and showed there was no one to remain unity anymore. The group is still going strong, but lacking a sense of direction and leadership. Rest in peace, ASAP Yam, who was a true genius and visionary, who took a mere idea and turned it into an empire. Throughout years of studying and meticulous planning, his impact is still greatly felt today.